you know, I'm Maddie. I'm assistant director for student welfare here at University of Arkansas. And I am here with Keanu from 20 somethings on Netflix. So Keanu, we work together a lot. Like we uh, have forged like a friendship and everything like that. Uh, How has it been since the show? Oh my gosh. Yes. Uh, I have Maddie. We started together at the University of Arkansas in the series role, right? Yeah, we did. It was our first years together. And I worked there, was it three years in the CRE role? Yeah, three full years and then part of a fourth year in August. So I guess it's been since I left in late August and it's February right now. So I feel like it's been a short time, but my life, I feel like so different because I left to film a TV show and then the show quickly came out. And so my life is very different right now. Yeah, that was such a fast turnaround too, because I know that there's the casting process over the summer that we were talking through. Um, there was then just you going for the show in August and then leaving. Um, and then the show came out within the same semester, it feels like. Yes. Oh my gosh, Maddie, I don't know if you remember, you were the first person I told when I got the first call in the process. It was been, it was a Southside meeting because you still were CRE, um, you were CRE back then. And so Mary, you, Ben, and I, we were in the meeting room, and we just finished, and my phone rang, and it, it was, like, literally the first call to say, like, hey, we're interested in starting you in this interview process, and I remember explaining it to you, and at first, I don't think you understood it, you're like, oh, like, because I was like, wait, like, I was, just everything was going through my head, like, if I get this, do I have to leave my job, like, what does this mean, and this is, like, still very, very beginning process of interviewing for the And I remember you saying like, well, can't they just like come to Arkansas and film you? But we just didn't know at the time, like what the show was, but you were the first person I remember like saying, Maddie, I just got this call. That's so, it's like so exciting to like look back on that too. I remember like, well, they could just film you in Arkansas. That's fine. (laughs) Then you can still have your job. You wouldn't have to worry about all these other things. Um, But yeah, because the show was so new, we had no idea what it was going to become. I even remember like our talks in the car in the parking lot, like us just (laughs) processing this process and like just what you were kind of going through. Um, So like what, how did you feel throughout that process before the show? Oh, it was definitely a challenge. I remember I loved my job in a CRE, like the CRE position. You wear many hats and you get to do things you love. And so it was hard. I realized in the process, if I am casted, you know, I would have to leave my job. Well, at the time I was hoping to do a leave of absence, but still like not being there during move in the beginning of the year, that's like important time for a CRE. And so it was just very like, oh my gosh, this is so exciting. I might be on a reality show, but at the same time, my job's my life. Like, how can I just quit everything and go do something else? Yeah. And I I also remember you talking about like going into the show about like how your job has always been your life. And like the big decision was putting Keanu first and like the phrase of this is the new Keanu, like this new year, new Keanu, like was always brought up in our meetings and you're kind of. Uh, coming out of your shell almost and becoming more of who you are like what what did that feel like and um, just what was kind of that final push for you to kind of go into this show process my last year CRE definitely prepped me personally to be ready for the show I know our last year I used to say I feel like I'm a phoenix risen it was just that very hard year for us it was pandemic which you we were working together you know like a lot thrown at us and then coming students coming back on campus during the pandemic but it also was just so much was going on in the nation and then just on campus and that's when I I remember I think that's the year I came out to the staff and that was the first time I ever like came out to a group of people and I don't know if you remember I was so emotional because it was just so hard to say out loud but I'm so thankful for like my peers like I think of you and Grace who like really walked me through like starting this new Keanu I think it's crazy because when I go on the show I even you know another Phoenix transformation but before I transformed on the show I had a transformation year while in the CRE role and also the students really helped me come out I remember in CRE meetings talking about representing the students I had students that would come to me for advice on just 
questions about their sexuality. And I realized like, wait, they don't realize I'm closeted. And it was so funny to me because I felt like maybe I'm wearing, it's like me wearing a blanket and playing hide and seek. Like everyone can clearly see me. Um, like I'm only hiding from myself. And so the students, I realized like I'm closeted. They're coming to me for advice. Also at a professional level, you don't see a lot of professionals who are openly out. And so I was like, if anyone has to be out for them, like it'll be me. And so definitely, they definitely helped push me to be out. Cause I thought about my own college experience. There weren't people who, you know, were professional or an adult who were out. And so I was like, representation matters. And so the students, they definitely helped me. Yeah. I think that that was a big thing that we kind of saw when the promos were released here. Um, there were a lot of students that had like this overwhelming support and excitement to see you on in this promo for Netflix, um, as well as a lot of the students that were out um, and that have said, I love Keanu as a CRE. I wish I could be supervised by him. I wish I could like be in his hall, things like that. Um, and I think that kind of overwhelming support <laughs> happened a lot. And I, I'm so sad you weren't here to see that, but they were all about you just from one video and it had spread like wildfire. That was gonna make me emotional. That really makes my day, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like there were like your past staff members that like um, you had to say bye to and everything like that. They were still so excited. And then it just like, everyone was like, did you hear about Keanu? He's on a Netflix show. This is so cool. Um, and so like with all that support, have you found any other kind of like support since the show, um, since even coming out and having your second full Phoenix transformation? I, I would say my students, especially the RAs I supervised have been a support, which was a fear of mine, honestly, because my first year I wasn't even out to myself. And so those students, you know, they didn't know I was gay. Um, and then I think my second staff, was my only staff I ever, we were doing an activity and was getting pretty deep um, staff bonding or staff development. And so I ended up opening up to them. I was gay, I, but I had the fear of like students who I did supervise, would they view me different once they see me on the show? And also going on a reality show, I'm putting everything out there. You know, in our field, we have to be very professional just because we're working with a student to a parent to a dean. And so they, you know, we don't, show this personal side of us and so I was like this is really like different for me I'm used to having a Keanu that only my friends would see if we're you know enjoying each other's company but besides that you know at work you don't see the side of me and so it's kind of nerve-wracking to be like the students who I either supervise or look up to me they're about to one know I'm gay to see me in my personal life so it was intimidating, but I would say that a, a lot of my students reached out and were like, I'm so proud of you. I'm so excited for you or reposted the promo. I've been really thankful for like the student support. I had door decks made about me and my castmates. I was like, oh, not me being a door deck. Like you've made it in housing if you're a door deck, right? Exactly. <laughs> I, I think like when they said, I'm making these door decks, what do you think? And I'm like, these are amazing and you have to show him <laughs> when you can because they're awesome. I thought that was so cool and they were just so proud of you. Um, I mean, honestly, the reception here with the team that um, the CRE team and housing, like we've been so proud of you and so excited. Like, I know I've told you, we did a watch party, a couple of watch parties where we all together, our favorite thing. And I know we told you this um, earlier, but was like, your shout out to your boss in the first episode um, about just leaving your position. How was it like just transitioning to not living on campus? Definitely a transition. Um, I will say I love that I was able to talk a little bit about my work because other professionals in higher ed have reached out and be like, yes, like finally representation in media and transitioning from, you know, our working at a university and then living where you work, it's such a dynamic, it's really hard to explain, but you know, it's like you live where you work. So how they always tell us, it's like you're a mayor, like as soon as you leave your apartment, you know, you might have to be like socializing with students or there might be a problem that you're gonna have to help with or help them like find the right person. But, you know, I went from all that living in a dorm that can house 800 students to this house with, 
seven, 20 somethings. And honestly, it wasn't that hard to transition, I guess, because I was so used to like always having students. Um, if anything, I'm kind of scared to live alone. Like I'm still trying to find a place to live. And I'm like terrified to live alone. Cause like, wait, yes, I had my own apartment as a CRE, but I had, you know, how many students in the same building. And then I was in a house with eight people and then right now I'm in a house with five people like can I live alone I think that's like the hardest part it looks like you need an animal like a pet (laughs) you know how I always want you to get a cat yes you would say that you do so well with a cat I'm just (laughs) saying (laughs) um but you spoke of that right it's like living by yourself and now like it's searching for an apartment or a place to live like everything that we've had to do and help people with adulting we now have to do for ourselves Um, how has that search been? Um, I know you did a TikTok yesterday (laughs) about searching for a job outside higher ed. How has that job search been? So I'm 28 now and my whole professional career up to this point has been in higher education. Maddie, I know you're the same boat in grad school is when I started working in higher education. And so you're a grad student, but you know, you're also working in housing And then my first professional job was with Greek housing at university housing and then Raz Ed as a CRE. And, you know, that's a lot of like, that's my, actually, yeah, that's all my twenties, like, you know? And so now when you're applying for jobs outside higher education, I remember I had a, I applied for a kind of a sales marketing job and the person called me just, it's just a 10 minute interview to understand the position better. And when I explained my resume, he's like, so you have no experience. And that really, it like went straight to the heart. It's like, I have done a, counting grad school, you know, it's like seven years, six years of this work. And, you know, we handle very heavy stuff from, yes, the fun of throwing events on campus, supervising RAs, but then, you know, from all the crisis management to you know a student at 2 a.m. from being very intoxicated to having mental concerns to you know it's a lot and so it's to, for you like it's just so hard I guess to translate that to other people for other people to understand it's like no I think I'm trying to do well and just translate it to my resume that understands like I feel like almost you like you can throw anything at me and I can handle it I'm just kidding but you know it's almost like that But like, really, that could be like an objective, be like, my goal is to have everyone throw things at me and I can show them I can handle it because that's what I do. (laughs) And, but even talking to you though, it's like, I miss higher ed. Like, I'm like, wait, do I want to go back? But I did say, I want to try something outside of higher ed, but us just talking about the students. I'm like, it's just such a fulfillment. I'm nervous. I would not get out of another job. Yeah. And I think that's always like scary whenever anyone decides to leave is because there's so many positives, but there's also like reasons to go, right? Like you always wanted to try something new. You always talked about like nonprofit organizations and working through that. Um, and I know you have a lot of really big dreams that you can achieve. Um, so I know you miss it here, but this is just a step to get you to where you're going to be. So what, so I mentioned the nonprofit thing. Um, how is that going? I know that was a big dream when we were talking about it before the show. Um, I know you're potentially doing a panel soon, which is exciting. Yes, I really want to help nonprofits. I've told Maddie this, I've talked about this maybe the last two years and that there's just so many nonprofits and us working in higher education, you know, I feel like it's almost on campus. There's so many resources. And then you have students who are like, wait, that exists? Or I didn't know like I could be helped in this area. And so I feel like in society, that's like the same way. There's so many people that need help or don't know resources. And I feel like there's nonprofits that, you know, people don't know about, or the nonprofit just doesn't have the money to market, or the also the problem on people wanting to create something that already exists where, you know, people could be combining their resources. And so now that I have a platform, I really want to highlight it. I do want to, I struggle with working for nonprofits, same in like higher education. It's just really, it's fulfilling, but there's not a lot of pay. And so I'm like, if I'm able, my main goal is being able to market. And so I'm hoping with my social media, I'm able to do that. And as you mentioned, I'm kind of my first step in this is in Austin, they have South by Southwest. And I'm so honored. I get to monitor a panel. And they have three leaders of a nonprofit who are all the under the age of 30, which is amazing. So these people are under the age of 30 and they are the leader of their nonprofits. 
And something you, if you see a nonprofit usually with a young leader, normally they don't have the money to market as some of these bigger nonprofits that exist already. And so I'm excited and hopefully giving, highlighting them and also sharing how they got there for anyone else who is in their twenties thinking like, wait, I want to create this nonprofit. That's so exciting. And for them to all be under 30, like that sounds so successful um, and to have a I'm nonprofit. Like, I'm like so impressed. I was looking through their bios. I'm like, this is incredible. One of the panelists I'm actually really excited for, she's a leader of Pedal the Pacific, which when I supervised at Pomfret, one of my RAs, Kalindi, she participated in one summer and it's an organization and they bike a wild amount of miles. I, can, I do not know off my head. You look them up on Instagram, Pedal the Pacific, um, but they do this to give light uh, to human trafficking. And so incredible organization. I believe it's all women that bike this cause in the summer, but I'm excited. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is like somehow a weird connection. When I supervised, one of my students was in this organization. Now I'm in Austin at South by Southwest and the leader of it is going to be on this panel. That's like a really nice, like full circle kind of moment. Um, even then, and then also like just knowing who that st- staff member is, Kalindi, like, and how passionate she was about that. Like, she really full sent it. Um, and just knowing that you get to now like, connect with this organization and add more like marketing to something that a student was very passionate about and loved. And you get to also do what you love by supporting them. So that's a good yeah. impact. But you also made me more excited because I realized, because I think of so many students in the summer, they do help out in a nonprofit way, or they join these different organizations. I'm excited now. I'm like, I'll be able to highlight nonprofits that hopefully, you know, college students are participating in like some kind of summer program. I'm missing the college atmosphere and just helping young adults. Because when you go to college, it's like my whole brand. I'm all about finding your authentic self. And that's what you go to college. It's your first time without your parents. And so you do have to think on your own. You have to develop, you know, what are my thoughts? What are my beliefs? What are my career aspirations? It's all about helping people write their stories, right? And, and you're here literally writing your own story as well. Um, for people who are looking to figure out how to author that, like, what is the advice you give them? Actually, you just may remind me of this, and I feel like it's advice to give, is that a reason I left higher education to do the show, as difficult it was to leave my position because my life was my job, and in our in higher education, I think any professional would say you get to help so many people each day. And that's like, I think our fulfillment. But I realized I wasn't helping myself. I was putting myself last. And so I was like, for once in my life, I want to help myself. And so for anyone writing their story, I'm like, yes, you know, still be a kind person, help out people. But remember, you're trying to find your authentic self. So it's okay to put yourself first or make sure, I'm not saying be selfish, you know, the whole month, but, you know, maybe once a week, it's like, hey, what day is my day? Or if you feel like in your in a rut and want something new, think about like, wait, what am I doing for me? So like with that authentic self, you've been doing a lot of different things um, since there's been a lot of like holidays and just big events, like since the show has released, how those gone? How, what was your family's reaction? Uh, family reaction was very funny. I was at dinner at my family's house. And so the show had dropped in two installments. It was like one week, five, six episodes, the next week, the last six. And so I was eating dinner before with my family before the last six had dropped. And we littered the dinner table and no one had brought it up. And I'm like, this is kind of strange. And so finally I was like, so like I was on a Netflix show, (laughs) like, did you watch? And, um, of course they did. And um, they were hilarious. My mom was convinced I was like engaged, but couldn't tell her until the next drop. I was like, mom, it's like the exact opposite, but she would not believe me. I was like, okay, like watch the next six, you know, I'm not secretly engaged. They were very supportive. Um, you know, my story in the show is a lot of emotion. And so my mom is like very thankful for like how everything was shown and my family's like my, I feel like my biggest supporters. Like I was telling my dad the other day how, you know, I still have goals on continuing television or entertainment. I was like, I want to make it big. My dad's like, we already think you're big. And I was like, oh, like they're, they're like my number one supporters. 
Yeah. I know your, your family has like been very positive about the whole experience. Even when they came to pack up your things, like they <laughs> like nonstop talked about you, like oh. they absolutely adore you and love everything that you've gone through. Um, I have to mention that they love you, Maddie. They still ask you about me. So <laughs> what happened was we, I thought I was gonna be able to do a leave of absence for the show. And as soon as I got a call Tuesday, I need to be there Thursday to start filming. And they gave me the link we were going to be filming and I did not have enough vacation to cover that. And then there isn't a leave to just leave. It has to be medical reason. And so, you know, our supervisor called me the Wednesday is like, I'm so sorry, but like you have to resign. Thankfully, I've never taken vacation. So I had like three weeks of vacation and I packed Maddie. Um, some of my other peers came over, helped me pack clothes that I was going to take Thursday with me. And then my family, I'm so thankful for my mom and dad. They actually drove down like two weeks later and Maddie and Cecily helped them pack up my whole apartment and put it in a storage unit. And so I forgot about that. I'm so thankful. Thankful for you, Maddie. And thankful my, my family drove all the way to Texas to Arkansas, put everything in a storage unit. Yeah, they, <laughs> they were amazing to kind of have and show around like I walked them to show them the stadium because they asked for it like it was like a little oh, mini tour too um, we talked a lot about you <laughs> um and just talking like one thing that literally popped into my head that we talked about is like how you got into D&D oh um, my gosh they were like we're not surprised that Keanu got into D&D because he really likes the game and he's very charismatic and into his own like um self and he likes to kind of act right and oh my God, nerdy I is. <laughs> we also miss you in our campaign we started a new one without you I'm sorry oh no and I know we talked a lot about that um your sister was amazing just in helping and figuring things out like your family I can only guess it's like the most supportive like unit that you have right my um I laugh my mom has Instagram and so like my, of course, they follow me on Instagram. My dad doesn't really have, my dad doesn't have any social media, but he made a TikTok just to see like what I'm posting. And I think it's so funny. I went on his account and it's like no profile picture. And then it's only like following one person. It's me. And I was like, oh, like they cracked me up. Is his username like user 5107 and the random? Was huge. Yes. And finally he like changed it to his name. And then now I think it's like a picture of his truck. And I laugh because my mom picture on Instagram is like, our, our, we had a chihuahua that passed away, but it's the picture of our dog. And I was like, these are like your typical like parents on social media, it's like a truck and a chihuahua are like. The, Just the, commenting no on all your lives. Yes. And I love that they comment because I'm like, no one knows, like that's my parents, but. That's so great. Well, now they might know. <laughs> it's like, if there's a random chihuahua profile picture, it might be. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, there was another thing uh, and just your emotions on the show like you were talking about that um I know there was some things that like popped up in the show they were like oh my gosh they caught like the real Keanu on the show and we were super excited were the was there anything that was like in the show that you were like I am so proud of that moment um that you kind of want to highlight or anything like that it goes along like this was helpful for me but I think anyone else who's I don't know if you're trying to discover yourself or be your authentic self is I just put it out there. Like I remember the third week was when spoiler alert, but you know, you see me go on a date and get my first kiss. And I remember coming back. And at that point, I not to be vain, but I was just very vulnerable and open in the beginning where my other roommates, I was like, they weren't doing stuff, I guess, on that emotional level yet. And I was just like, am I doing this wrong? Like, I am putting everything out there. And, you know, I feel like some of my roommates has just been like, cheers and, you know, like, just some fun dialogue. And so I was very nervous because I was like, I was, I don't know, I was scared I was going to look like a fool or I don't know, but I'm so thankful I did because I get so, um, people that support me are like so kind and it helped me grow. Like, I remember you were at like maybe 15,000 Instagram followers, like before the promos happened. And I think I checked this morning, you're close to a hundred thousand. I don't I'm know like, if you've been looking at that. Maddie knows I'm like a small country boy. And so, yes, I think I had like 1,800 followers before the show. And I remember even the first month I was at 10 K and that was like so many to me. Like I did a video just for that. Cause I was like, I cannot believe I'm at 10 K and now to almost be at hundred. I was like, it, it is very overwhelming. But at the same time, I just felt like 
so much joy. I cannot keep up with my DMs, how much support I have. And so I always joke, like, when I'm on my deathbed, I'm going to finish reading all my DMs because people write me the nicest thing and they're like a paragraph long. So I have to reply. So that's why sometimes I can't even like, I'm like, I don't have the emotion capability to read these right now because you just can't read this long message and like not reply, you know? Yeah. I think that's so sweet that you're so intentional about your responses to all your DMs when they're happening. Um, Cause I don't think that's a lot of interaction people get when they DM like people that mean a lot to them that oh. also have like hundred K followers basically. So I try and I know I can't, I feel bad when I, I can't, it is impossible for me to reach everyone. But I try. I've heard some people say like, oh, I don't even reply. I was like, I cannot imagine not replying. Like, you know, yeah. someone took the time to like send this. I want to try and like tell them it was received. You're so sweet. That's so good. Do you have anything planned for 100K when you get there though? Like I know people do like big reveals, but are you going to do something? So actually I'm, I've been at 94 for like two weeks. And so I, I think when I get 95, I want to just do a post on like, how grateful I am out of the show like I'm not the most popular I always admit that um but the people that support me I feel are like very very dedicated or supportive of me even yesterday I was receiving dms and like people were referring to things when they first started following me after the show and so I was like my people that support me are like loyal and they were here for me and I'm, I'm just like so thankful for them you know like I cannot imagine, my life's still a kind of a hot mess a little bit, but I cannot, I'm happy. I'm the happiest I've ever been. I cannot imagine living this life right now if it wasn't for people that supported me, you know? I am so happy that you're happy, like, because this was a huge decision and a huge jump and like leap almost of faith and like in yourself. I think that's been so amazing to see like your growth and like your happiness happen. Just knowing that you're living your dream. I love this so much for you. <laughs> also, I wanted to kind of talk about like, um, you said that you're a small country boy in Texas, right? Like you changed from Texas to Arkansas and back to Texas. Were there any similarities with those lifestyle changes? Anything new that you had to process just going back from States? So right after grad school, I moved to Arkansas and on the show, you know, it said, it shows I'm like, I'm from Fayetteville, Arkansas, which my Texas friends were very confused, but I was telling them, <laughs> I was the like eldest out of everyone in the house. So I lived in Arkansas for five years. So to me, it was like, hey, like I am from, I consider myself an Arkansan. Um, I always, I said, I never lose a Texan. I'm like, I'm a Texan Arkansan. Um, but you know, everyone else was coming from home. So it made sense, you know, Natalie be like, oh, I'm from Miami. Cause she was coming from home. But to me, it didn't sound like, oh, I'm from Joshua. And it's like, I haven't been to Joshua since I left for college. Uh, so there is that and I feel bad because some people are like I'm also from Arkansas and I'm like are they gonna hate me if they find out like I wasn't born and raised in Arkansas um, and I will say I did multiple times explain my story but I think it's too complicated it just didn't make the cut <laughs> I will say I think Arkansas does meet some stereotypes that aren't the most positive but I always advocate that Fayetteville and the University of Arkansas is such a supportive community and that I say of all places for me to come out, it would be in Arkansas. And I was like, Fayetteville is just like this Hallmark town. I was like, the university is even a different place. And that, you know, my peers and my students are what helped me come out. Um, and, you know, it is in Arkansas. And so it was an adjustment. I guess going to Texas, because like right now I'm in my hometown and, you know, my nails are painted and I get nervous just to go to the dealership to have my car truck looked at because I don't know is someone going to say something or look at me different just because my nails are painted? Um, so it kind of the same small town feels. Um, but I will say that when I was a CRE, I did feel like there kind of was this force field of it's okay to be who you are, which helped me like come out. And same when I did the show, like not even just my seven other roommates, but, you know, we had like a 50, 100 crew you know you don't see like people on set and they just like you know it never was a question to me I'm like oh my gosh all these people now know I'm gay it was just like another force field so I've been very thankful you know I had my housing force field to my Netflix force field and I'm kind of out of that right now which is a little nerve-wracking uh, but I will say that is like one 
similarity I had. You make it sound like it's like the invisible woman shooting out of her palms. That's kind why I imagine it. Like when I had to leave the show, which is a spoiler, I had to leave the um, for like a, about a week. Uh, I remember being scared because I was like, wait, I just realized I feel like I'm in a different realm. And I feel like my truck just like went through the force field, like WandaVision, you know how she has her day. Like, I felt like I was leaving. I was like, I'm so scared. And I think that's so interesting is like, because you did have to kind of like almost switch on and off in the middle of that. Have you had to do much of that since being back in your hometown? A little like, I'm trying to get to Austin because, and I feel like anyone even maybe not on a reality show would say this, but when you're in Austin, I feel like I'm in a movie. Like, it's just like such an amazing place. So accepting, something always going on. And, you know, right now I'm in the suburbs. And so I'm just like, I need to be back in Austin. Like, you know, I get Fayetteville vibes, but like on a kind of almost a city level, but it's also hard because like you're in a city and sometimes you feel like you're in a city. Like I remember we're on a rooftop and I was like, oh my gosh, like I'm on a rooftop. There's a huge building, like I'm in the city. But then sometimes you're just in a, like a little taco restaurant or a uh, coffee shop. And you're like, I feel like I'm not in this huge city. Like I feel so comfortable and homey. Um, how has the like kind of public reception been like even with COVID since the show? Like, how have you been doing with that? Yeah, um, COVID was still is still around so during the show they're very strict on us uh, we had to get tested every morning and then anyone that interacted with us had to have show proof of vaccination and also been tested with a negative result we weren't limited but you know we were kind of like at times I feel like a little caged and that's what I'm enjoying now is like um, obviously still trying to be safe but there aren't you know we had precautions because we were us, eight of us, and then, you know, all, everybody on set, we didn't want anyone to get sick, and thankfully, um, out of that, you know, eight of us, nine of us uh, roommates, none of us ever contracted COVID. I did get COVID after New Year's, because I, I was, I did do New Year's in Austin, and so thankfully, I had my booster shot, so I, it was like a one-day thing for me, but I, I feel like housing almost, like, prepared you for COVID, you know, we were, I, I used to tell my roommates, because we had someone on set who would be strict on the mask um, because it was our living space. We didn't have to wear masks in the house, but you know, anyone else that did, they had to wear masks. But I always tell people like, that used to be my job. You know, I'm like, it's hard, but you know, I was a person telling you like, you know, it's not personal. It's just the policy you need to wear a mask. I, I, I have social anxiety and I didn't even realize that Maddie as the world opens. Cause you know, there are now like, like restaurants and bars in Austin open. And so, you know, I go in and I didn't even think about that. Like just the socialization, like you're not, we weren't used to that. That's just, I just had that reflection. Even I didn't catch that on the show. I mean, I, on the show, I would talk about, it was weird for me to make friends because my friends were like, you only coworkers, like for the last five years, the only new friends I made were like People my coworkers, know. which, you know, we, we are real friends, but it's so different. Like, you know, we had work and then we became friends where I'm now at stage of life, like, wait, I have to make friends, like, not in a work setting. I know. And it, it's also even weird for our friendship, too, as I've been noticing, is, like, we had a structured environment <laughs> where we interacted and we're friends and everything like that. So we're also transitioning to, like, we don't have that structure <laughs> as much. So, like, lunch every single day to make sure we were eating lunch in our busy days, right? And so it, it's, like, a weird transition. The last kind of question I have for you is, like, what can we expect for you? I know we talked a little bit about the panel that you have up coming up. Is there anything else that we can expect from Keanu um, after this or steps forward? Yes, I'm still trying to get my ducks in a row, but I will say in March, I will be at South by Southwest. Natalie, who is one of my, was on the show with me and now one of my best friends, we're going to start a podcast together and just hopefully creating a platform, talking about things that people aren't comfortable talking about, or, you know, like you never, you need advice, but no one's like talks about it out loud. And so, you know, we just want to create a safe place for that. And then job interviewing. So hopefully landing a job soon. Cause to me, it's like, once I get a stable job, I'm moving to Austin. And so follow me on Instagram and TikTok as I continue trying to live my authentic life. Yeah. Let's get him to that 100K. <laughs> but it's really nice kind of catching up with you and just kind of asking questions about like your experience, like just reflecting on this whole process. Like it's been insane. Like 
what, since June last year? So not even yeah. a whole year. I'm like, I missed university. I do have to go back when my, um, when I do get a place to go get all my items. I'm like, it's going to be emotional. Cause I was like, I, I, I haven't visited Fayetteville since I left and, you know, it has a big place in my heart. Like Pomfret Hall was like my, you know, it was my home for three years, three and a half years. I'm sure the people at Sabor are going to really love seeing you again, but it was nice to have you on here. Um, too, Maddie. I miss you. I miss you too so much, Keanu. <laughs>